Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Grand Arena Championships are back and we're doing 5v5 with ships, so I wanted to talk a little bit about some defensive theory with you guys. First, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate everything that you do. At least, everything that I'm aware of. So, just so you're aware guys, I'm not using any actual like video clips, I I'm using a lot of screenshots and we're talking about theory. A lot of what I'm talking about doesn't necessarily need to be watched, you, you can watch it and there, there absolutely is some value to that, but it you can also probably just listen to it, kind of like a podcast or something like that. Um, so, you know, if, if you want to do that, feel free, um, you know, this, this is fairly dry stuff in terms of how visually stimulating it is. But, uh, you know, I think that the content itself is important. At least it, it's important to me. So uh, let's move on. A couple small notes to point out before we start talking about defenses. Uh, this Kyber round is going to be less exclusive than the past one was. Uh, probably about seven, eight wins are going to get you into Kyber uh, as long as you get full clears. So. It's less exclusive, which is just fine. Uh, less pressure this season for me, at least. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is on the feats. We normally have a second multi-tier feat, and you know it, it's traditionally been like an undersize attack feat that we can earn throughout the entirety of Grand Arena, and that is no longer a thing. Uh, at least in this Grand Arena, we only have one, and that's to clear full zones. So, uh, just something to note. And let's move on to defense discussion all right so here's the board it's the same as it was in season three which was the last time and really the only other time that we've played 5v5 plus ships and uh you know it's it, it's not my very favorite map just because if you kill two squads then it, you kind of remove all mystery as to what other squads you're going to be facing and you know I prefer to have the multi-tier approach of like well you know if we, if I clear one zone then I'll get to see what's behind that zone uh, but I still don't have a perfect picture you have to kill four squads to be able to get that perfect picture uh, in this one all you have is uh, you, you kill two squads and you know uh, that's it. Like, ships aren't an enigma. Like, it, they're not interesting. Everyone knows what their counters are. Maybe once we start getting two ships in a ship zone, it'll start being more interesting. Uh, for right now, though, it's uh, unfortunately dull. That being said, we have this game mode to play, and I do love Grand Arena, and there is a lot of nuance to it, and I wanted to discuss some of it. That This discussion isn't going to be, like, super, super advanced. Um, it, it's... It's a difficult thing to discuss, though, and I, I know that a lot of people have asked me, like, they, they kind of fail to grasp a lot of these concepts, and fail is perhaps a too strong of a word, but it, it, it can be a really tricky thing to understand, and so let, let's just kind of go through a few things here. All right, what you're looking at here is my final match of Season 3 in 3v3, <laughs> and by which I mean 3 plus 3 minus 1v5. Uh, uh, also known as 5v5. I had a lot of successful defenses in my final uh, half of, of that season, and, you know, things were starting to click for me. I don't know if it was just, you know, it's still a small sample size. It's uh, just six matches, um, but my, my defenses were doing pretty well, so I'm just showing you guys this. This is all pu public record, and this is not what I'm doing in this current season, upcoming. Uh, but you can see my opponent eventually got stalled out on my bounty hunters, and this, this was in the finals against an extremely skilled player. And, you know, you can see my my pretty <laughs> pretty lame Akbar fleet that was just relieved that it didn't actually have to fight. Um, and, um, you know, uh, I've never really enjoyed defense, frankly. Um, you know, I've been getting into it more lately, uh, but, you know, the, this graphic actually, I... I couldn't find the strike through what I was I tried to find a strike through uh, to get to get rid of the mandatory so it said defense is fun uh, but <laughs> I couldn't find it on this program and so this is what we get and I'm not gonna alter it so enjoy that if you can 
One factor to the new defenses in 5v5 plus ships is the fact that you only have seven squads to be putting down instead of eight when you're not doing ships. And, you know, that's going to throw everyone for a loop because everyone's used to having to have not only one extra defensive team, but they also need, needed one extra offensive team. And so trying to condense your squads, uh, you know, into more efficient uh, defenses is going to be a really important uh, element to this uh, however that's not really what i'm going to be talking about here you guys can watch my other videos and see the kind of defenses that i'm using and the kind of ways that i'm implementing that but uh, you know, for now, we're just going to be looking at, you know, what, what the implications are. So the first implication is simply that you are going to need fewer attack teams. Uh, you know, it, previously you needed eight to be able to take out eight of your oppo opponent's teams, and probably you wanted a backup ninth. Uh, and now, if you want to full clear your opponent, you only need seven, uh, you know, and you have an extra squad just sitting there, uh, you know, on offense because it's not being used on defense, uh, you know, and that's, uh, I've already touched on that just a minute ago, but we need to have uh, fewer offensive teams, which kind of opens the doors to having a really creative defense. One of my friends was asking for help in setting their defenses and you know i wanted to help and so i, I took a lot of screenshots here of our all of our different scouting and you know i, I kind of want to walk you guys through the process so you know uh, the first thing i noticed is that uh, my friend's opponent was afraid of nest you can see they used uh, jedi knight revan there against nest uh, then in uh, you know like the next battle they used padme <laughs> against nest and then uh, in another battle they used a uh, Jedi Revan squad against Nest and lost, <laughs> so maybe they're justified in their fear, uh, but they they can't play against Nest, and then they had to clean it up with Commander Luke, like with what, like crazy, right? So clearly they have a, you know, a, a mental tendency toward, uh, or at least aversion toward Nest. Now uh, the other thing that we noticed immediately was that General Skywalker was never placed on defense. Uh, they always, always, always use General Skywalker on offense, and uh, that's most likely, you know, uh, just because it's a crutch. It's the team that you can use to kill General Skywalker if you don't have a General Skywalker killer of your own. And looking at this guy's teams, uh, it, it was pretty apparent that he wasn't going to be able to counter my friend's General Skywalker team without his own. So, uh, pretty obvious things there, uh, you know, just some observations. Now, one thing I do want to point out is for ships, uh, if you, you're trying to full clear here, guys, and I know that people love to put Negotiator on defense, and, you know, it, it doesn't make sense, though, if they can't beat Negotiator with something else. People still do it, but uh, if you're trying to get max points and you both put Negotiator on defense and neither of you can actually kill Negotiator, then it's just, you're wasting points. You're wasting, you know, you may as well just punt, frankly. The rule is you need to be able to beat everything that your opponent can put on defense. And it is crazy to me when I see people who can't beat Negotiator put their own Negotiator down on defense. Like they can't beat other Negotiators without using the mirror and that they still put it on defense. And, you know, maybe I'm stepping on toes here and I, I, I'm not trying to, but I don't understand. Like if you're trying to full clear, then how can you expect to always full clear if the only team that you can full clear with is on defense? Like if you're okay, with just losing all the points for uh, the round uh, on ships that's fine but you know the, the other problem is what if your opponent has developed a counter to the to your fleets uh, what what if that's the case like that that then that sucks because you have negotiator down and you're like well at least they're not going to get through my ships and then they do and you're basically just screwed <laughs> like uh, you don't have a way to get through their negotiator uh, like it's it's a it, it doesn't make much sense to me uh, if you if you can beat their negotiator if you can beat their meta fleets with only your negotiator keep it for offense and punt just both of you get 60 banners and move on make ships a non-factor 
that's what I do. I've made Kyber every time, so it is a winning strategy. Now, you know, that, that being said, if you can develop another ship, uh, another fleet that can beat the meta, then awesome. I, I am working on that as well. Hopefully you guys will see that some in the next Grand Arena Championship, but uh, we'll talk about that later. In the end, uh, my whole message here is just punt. If don't, don't try to get fancy with fleets, just try to make them a non-factor. If you both get 60 points, 60 banners, then awesome, the, <laughs> good to go. Don't try to, don't try to get fancy. Alright, so as I see it, the other three zones have various uh, functions and, you know, different roles that they play in uh, this whole strategy thing. So, you know, the, the zone in the bottom uh, front, I, I call it the mandatory zone because it, in almost every case you're going to need to clear that zone in order to make good decisions on the other zones. Now, I know that a lot of people on offense tend to, like, they'll attack the top zone for some reason first, and there, there are some good reasons to do that, but um, in general, you want to hit the mandatory zone first. Uh, once you clear that, then you'll know the other five teams that you have to face with, with Guam and you you'll be able to make good decisions theoretically at least um you know uh, at the the role of the top zone in the front is just to make your opponent uncomfortable you put three really strong squads there things that they're going to have to plan for things that you know that you know they they're going to have to counter but they have to take out that mandatory zone first so they're going to be sparing some of their really strong uh some of their really strong teams uh, just because they have to plan on being able to beat the squads that they can see so you're making you're making them uncomfortable you know and, and that's a great place to put your opponent you, you know if it's a bunch of squads that you know only have one counter and you know that your opponent is going to just be able to take those and move on or if you have a bunch of like filler squads like that doesn't cause any discomfort that doesn't uh, cause any stress you want your opponent to be feeling a little bit of stress in their decision making not that you wish them ill I mean, maybe you do, and maybe maybe you should, but that's not the point. The point is that you're trying to make them feel uncomfortable, and you're trying to make it so that their planning is really difficult. Because if they want to take out those mandatory uh, zones, or the mandatory squads, they're going to have to use squads that don't also interfere with the discomfort zone. Uh, and then a lot of people see the back-bottom zone as optional, and I... I guess I just disagree. You, you should always be trying for a full clear. Uh, however, you know, that that's the zone that most people trip up on because they've been planning, they've been tiptoeing around the mandatory zone so much that after they've used these uh, kind of bizarre counters to, to take them out, potentially, then they, they won't have the, the right plans to be able to take out that zone. And a lot of people psychologically will just kind of give up. They'll be like, well, that's the smaller zone. It's in the back. You know, at least I cleared the front one. I can clear the discomfort zone, get to ships, clear ships, and, you know, I have a good chance to win if my opponent doesn't full clear me. And, you know, you're always going for the full clear. So... The, the whole goal in this board is just to cause stress, but make decision making difficult if you can. Um, you know, there's going to be certain decision points, which we'll go over shortly here. But by and large, it, your your goal here is <laughs> it just to make things hard for them, uh, make make decision making difficult. And in that regard, I do like this board. It's a little more nuanced than it initially looks because you're giving them more information with five zones or, or five squads up front. All right, so let's put a little of this theory into practice here. Um, you know, so we looked at all those screenshots of, uh, you know, the scouting report. Let's kind of continue on the strategy building here. Um, so we know that our opponent doesn't like Nest. That's not a huge factor here. First, we know that they have General Skywalker and won't use General Skywalker until they find General Skywalker. So that's a gimme that they are always going to use General Skywalker. 
uh, you may as well just put them in the mandatory zone. If they can't get through General Skywalker, if they miss that uh, mirror match, if they lose it, then they lose, basically. Uh, <laughs> they can't clear the back zone, may as well just put it in a place. Uh, put your opponent in a position where if they fail against this squad, they're just going to lose. And, you know, they were always going to save their General Skywalker until they cleared uh, that front zone anyways. So you're not actually, you know, this is one of those decisions points that I was talking about like this isn't a hard decision for them it's not putting stress on them the stress here is if they fail then they lose and if for some reason they do put General Skywalker on defense then you know uh, <laughs> maybe you aren't able to take out their General Skywalker though you probably should have taken uh, a counter to that you know if you're gonna put your own General Skywalker on defense you should have your <laughs> you should have a counter to General Skywalker available uh, just in case but in this case if if you're putting your Skywalker on defense just put your posit your opponent in a position of if you don't win then you lose and if they did the same, they put their Skywalker in this same zone, then it's, it might be a little bit boring of a match. It's going to be like a hyper-efficiency match. But, you know, it's this is better than putting your Skywalker in the back zone here and your opponent then uh, surprising you and putting theirs in the front zone and you can't clear it and now you're just screwed because you can't actually clear them but they can clear they can't clear you but they can clear one more zone than you so uh, you know front and center uh, make make the obvious matchup obvious and just put some pressure on them to win all right so next up we need to figure out what squad is going to go with the, the general skywalker squad and this is where we can get a little bit devious now in the scouting i, I guess i didn't put any screenshots in uh, previously but uh, this opponent really, really relies on Padme to kill uh, Night Sisters. They that's the only counter they ever use is Padme versus Night Sisters, and you know that we can use that. And <laughs> this kind of seems a little bit silly. Uh, you know, like we're we're gonna give them something that they're strong at, uh, but. What we're really doing here, uh, we're going to put Night Sisters on defense. It doesn't matter, Talzin or Saj, whatever. I like Talzin a little bit better in uh, in the current setting with relics and everything, but whatever. Um, that's beside the point. We're, we're taking Night Sisters here, uh, not because we think we're going to hold. We know that, <laughs> once again, your your opponent is actually going to have an easy decision. Uh, you know, at least they think, because they always love to kill Night Sisters with Padme. That's their crush that's their thing and the fact is if you can put a squad behind the night sisters that uh, they're, they're gonna struggle to deal with and that they would normally use Padme to counter uh, potentially then it, you're going to be in a lot better situation and so you, you put night sisters here and then in the back you can put a Padme squad on defense uh, you know depending on how your offense is set up it, the thing is, so so they've already used their Skywalker uh, to kill your Skywalker. They've already used their uh, Padme to kill your Night Sisters, and uh, so that they don't have many options. They could use Treya potentially here, but and we'll address that in a minute. Um, you know, they they could use uh, Jedi Knight Revan, which is also something we will address. Uh, but the fact is, probably their best option at at that point was probably going to be Padme Mirror Match. And we've kind of just taken that away from them. We've also put them in a squad or in a zone that they're going to care less about than the top zone. They, they need to clear the top zone now because it, that, that top zone is worth way more points, not only because it's it's worth literally more because there's more squads there, that you, you also have to get through it to be able to access the ship zone, which is also worth a lot of points. So... Uh, you know, they're going to put a lower priority on Padme and taking the squads out in this zone, and that's what you want. So to go right alongside the Padme squad, you, you can throw Geonosians there, and, you know, the number one counter probably that this opponent is going to have, and I should have mentioned way earlier that this opponent always, always puts Darth Revan on defense every single time it, like without fail since the start of time or at least since the start of grand arena history they've put 
Darth Revan on defense. And so they, they're not going to be able to counter Padme with Darth Revan, most likely. Um, you know, and, and things change. People do change. It, but, you know, given the information that we have, it's going to be a really tough decision for them. Uh, if they don't have Darth Revan, they're probably going to want to use Treya. Now, Treya is a good option against Padme. However, this guy's probably running low on options to be able to deal with uh, Padme. And... Uh, these Geonosians here are also, uh, like, they're, they're tough. If you don't have the right team to deal with them, then you, you can, you, you absolutely lose to Geonosians. Like, the, you, if you can't, I've been stuck behind them a few different times. People who've watched my videos know how much I hate Geonosians. And so, uh, you know, you're making their decision harder, and it's in a zone that's less important. So, you know, Geonosians, you want to use Treya, but... Padme, you also want to use Treya. What what do you do? You can use other things. However, that's where the top zone comes in. Now, you remember that I called the top zone uh, in the front the discomfort zone, and your opponent has been staring at this zone uh, forever, the, the whole time. They've had this information. However, you know, they... They've needed to clear those two bottom squads, and they used the squads that they thought were going to uh, be the best. That this whole time, they're they're thinking like, okay, well, I can't use, you know, Jedi Revan here because I need to use him against uh, Grievous, or maybe I need to use him against Nest, you know, or maybe I use uh, Treya against Nest, or uh, I don't know. <laughs> like none of these squads are necessarily that easy to take out. The Newt team might be a little bit suspect honestly um but otherwise like grievous it requires a specific squad to take out you know you can use treya to counter grievous in certain circumstances uh, but you also have the padme squad to deal with you have the geonosian squad to deal with only one treya squad and then the whole time you're thinking well how am i going to deal with nest i you know it it's like who really knows? They've already used one of their nest counters. They used Padme against nest one time. And now Padme's gone. You're going to use Treya. Uh, you, maybe you'll use Commander Luke. Uh, there's, there's just not enough squads to go around. And uh, now now we're causing some discomfort. They're probably going to use something like First Order to take out that newt squad. And that's unfortunate. Um, you know, maybe we need to shore up that uh, squad a little bit. But, you know, after that, it's like, okay, they, they have Jedi Revan, and they have Commander Luke, and they have Treya. And who else do they have? <laughs> you know, like... What other squads do they have to be able to counter this? And, it, you know, it's it's going to be a tricky thing. And, you know, in the end, they're going to opt for the top zone and being able to clear that because they need to get into ships. And once they clear ships, then they're going to try to clear the bottom zone. And the bottom zone, you know, they, they've probably used Treya, frankly, to clear one of these squads up top. Um, you know, a lot of people will use uh, Jedi Training Ray or first order to kill the kira squad with nest like that's not a big deal I, I realize that you know that that is beatable by a non-meta team but this opponent specifically hates nest and is afraid of them and so they're probably gonna want to overcompensate and take that nest squad out with something a little bit bigger um, you know, maybe they'll get fancy and just use, like, a, a Nihilus plus a bunch of tanks and just, uh, you know, annihilate that team one by one. Hey, that, that could happen, but the fact is, you know, they're going to lose a ton of banners doing that, and, it, like, it, you're messing with them. They're You're stressing them out, you know, that now their Treya... Uh, team is going to be incomplete and they can only use them against Geonosians. If you do that, then who do you use against Padme? It, like it, you're just caught, you're trying to cause all these different problems for them mentally. <laughs> and you know, uh, that and that's the goal. If you can if you can cause them to make one choice that's, you know, horrible, one bad choice, that's all it takes and then they're done. That that's it. That's all she wrote. Um you know, that and that, that's the goal, for me at least. I don't care about ships. Ships you can punt. Ships you can get fancy with if you want to invest in a counter. Um, but the other stuff is just kind of, uh, you know, the, the squad stuff is the more interesting part. So, you know, there's a ton of different ways to 
go about setting your defenses. I'm not saying that I'm the sole arbiter of truth here. I know that a lot of people do a lot more creative things. This is just one example of you know using your opponent's tendencies uh, against them when uh, you're placing your defenses. And so, anyways, I, I think that that's probably all I'm going to be talking about <laughs> today. This video has already gone a little longer than I intended, you know, and. Uh, to those of you who are watching, thanks for watching. Um, I know that it's it hasn't necessarily been the most visually stimulating uh, experience, but you know, as I said previously, like you you can probably listen to this episode as more of like a podcast or something. You, you, there's there's not much going on visually, but there is a lot of theory that I think you can follow along with just by listening. And so, uh, anyways, guys, I'm gonna close it here. Uh, I, I hope that you guys all place great defenses from now on except for the people who are in my pod please uh don't tell any of them about this <laughs> because it probably gives them a valuable insight in how to beat me too so um <laughs> there is that anyways guys thank you so much for watching uh stay tuned for my first grand arena match here in a couple days and remember that in all things zareth prevails <laughs>